Welcome to part three of the Northwestern Institute of Technology course in Metafield Complexity. In this episode, we finally reconcile rope theory with the Gordian knot dilemma. We needed a theory that was bigger and stronger than string theory. But what do you call that? Rope theory. Look, some of that stuff is so complex. It makes cancer look like a common cold. We thought we had all the answers. And all of a sudden, we were wrong. The Gordian knot dilemma may have been the greatest problem our field had ever faced. Rope theory was the burning heart of my work for many years. And when the Gordian dilemma came about, it was like trying to look at the sun. This is, of course, futile. But if one looks off to the side of the sun, one can make out many features. Look too long, and one can become blinded by the image of that final goal, such as it is with rope theory. Rope theory is basically a cleavage between linear and non-linear string theory. It was first proposed by Alexander Horn in 1983. But then the radian matrix came along and exposed a problem, the Gordian knot dilemma. So the radian matrix is what you get if the reticulation of a non-linear curved space can be described by the isometric transformation of a sine curve. But this means that the bilinear strings are crossed. And this creates an unbreakable knot in the field space. Hence the Gordian knot dilemma. Yes, I, I discovered the matrix early on in my PhD study of rope theory. I was going to take it further, but I started getting heart troubles. As luck would have it, Jerry had just started treatment at our institute's tropical disease centre, so it seemed the perfect time for us to talk about it. She explained how the matrix enabled the strings to straighten, and it just hit me. All I had to do was add a zero gamma rem function and integrate over the curve, and it was just as simple as it sounds. Professor Hawley had no idea that just across campus, in the physics department, the same problem was being attacked from a very different perspective by Associate Professor Nathan Rivers. I was working uh, in cosmology on the hyperinflating Little Bang approach when I came across the work of Ivacha Karanova, his work on the Gordian knot dilemma. It really had a profound effect on me. I thought, this is what I want to do with my life. The, the, the disconnect between rope theory and the Gordian knot, it was, uh, it was just beautiful. Karanova started with Pythagoras' theorem. This states that the area of the square whose side is the hypotenuse of a triangle will equal the sum of the squares whose sides are the two other sides of the triangle. Karanova extended this by applying it in the three manifold of n space. Now, from there it's very simple to deduce the appearance of ropes. It was like taking a four cylinder car and sticking a jet engine into it. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. But Karanova got stuck reconciling this with the Gordian knot dilemma. Then came Professor Hawley and his proof of the reconciliation. Hawley used the Redian matrix and Hironachi Yada's Yada conjecture to reconcile rope theory with the Gordian knot dilemma. This is probably best explained by taking this person here as the polyiambic particular. Now by applying the extended Pythagorean 3 manifold, Hawley said that this was like placing your positronic lambda proton somewhere over there. But of course, it should appear over there. And that's what's wrong with Hawley's proof. However, the solution was simple. It came down to reticulating the Yarda conjecture's n-space modular curves. Unbelievable! I would never have thought to play with the n-space modular curves. For so many years, I had no thought of competition. How could my life's work be so wrong? 
And then I saw he used the Yada conjecture. Had Hawley found a flaw? Was Rivers' solution to the knot beginning to unravel? In layman's terms, the Yada conjecture takes modular curves and transforms them into Euclidean in-space. During my time convalescing from Hypertonia, I was able to help Hawley prove that the Yada conjecture could not solve the Gordian knot dilemma. The Yada conjecture gives an invalid solution when a surface integral of zero is applied in a conventional sense. Now this is like letting go of a helium balloon and expecting it to sink. <laughs> but I had a revelation once when I was tying up my shoelaces. I noticed that the lace was in a loop. And it occurred to me. The Yada conjecture could turn back in on itself. Inverting the Yada conjecture was a stroke of brilliance was perhaps the most significant step in the field in the past 50 years. I have to admit, I had all the tools to solve it. Oh, it's quite ironic that he used my own theory against me. Well, I guess my rope knot reconciliation theory is the end of it. Hawley has made an amazing contribution to my work, and I, I hope he continues to do so. To paraphrase Sir Isaac Newton, I suppose you could say I stood on the shoulders of a giant. <laughs> <laughs>